What up, dude bros? I'm Frank. This is a video review of some new Nerf Tactical gear. At first glance, this looks like a reskin with a new cool camo of the same old garbage that they output last year. But that's not the case. They've improved these products to make them actually usable for real competitive nerfers, which I'm blown away by, and it's just awesome that these things are now on the market. So let's get into it. Look at this guy, enthusiastic nerfer of the year award. <laughs> this dude's like, yo, just finish the photo so I can go fling some more foam, bros. <laughs> That's the same kid. <laughs> That's the same dude. <laughs> Mr. Enthusiastic of the Year over here clearly likes this battle vest better. <laughs> So to restate, everything's not included with a single purchase, I bought four different things for this video. But combining everything into one video because these products don't warrant their own videos. So the first super obvious change to these products is their camo. This is the old camo, this is the new one. It reminds me of a tiger stripe pattern, but it's all straight lines, there are no curves at all. I personally think it looks super cool, but as with most cosmetic stuff, it's all down to personal taste. I'm not sure if one looks better or worse, I think they both look pretty cool. Now that I think about it, the, the pattern, it's like that uh, song, um, I'm somebody that you used to know with all the lines and shapes and stuff. Really cool music video. Somebody that I used to know. I can't sing. <laughs> Other than the camo change, there are minor differences with some of these products, and the new Battle Waist Belt is a completely new product, to my knowledge. But I'll start off with my favorite product, and the one I think most people are going to be interested in. The Elite Battle Vest, with an MSRP of about 30 US dollars. At first glance, it looks like the other Nerf Tactical Vest, which are kind of garbage in my opinion, but this is of a nicer, thicker material. It seems like you could abuse it, and it wouldn't rip quite as easily. Up in the front, four magazine pouches, and these are not garbage pouches, these actually work. 12 round magazines are held in there, pretty stable, 18 round mags will stick, but if you're doing too much hardcore parkour, then an 18 round stick mag, because it's longer, might flip out. 12 round mags, though, are solid. Above that, two little ammo things for the cosmetic darts. Like I've said in past videos, that's not an efficient way to store darts, but it is cool looking. And if you're out of ammo everywhere else, I mean, it's better to have it there than not have it, right? And on one side, there's a little pouch for maybe your cell phone, a wallet, or something like that. And down the front, there's a zipper, so if you want to adjust the sides and get that exactly how you want it, you can just unzip, take off. The zipper seems to be of pretty high quality given the price of the product. However, the zipper is on the left hand side, which is uh, for girls' clothes. So if you're a girl, it'll be right at home. But for me, my left hand's not used to using a zipper, so it's it was weird. The strength of the zipper seems fine, but it is odd, and it might seem like it's jamming, but it's probably because you don't use a zipper with your left hand ever. Interesting history lesson on zippers, BT Dubs. Why are women's zippers on the left-hand side, you ask? Because back in the day, zippers were really only on really fancy stuff, and girls wouldn't dress themselves. They had their slaves dress them. So when you're dressing someone else using your right hand, it makes more sense to, for the zipper to be on the left-hand side. Men were expected to dress themselves, so they needed to use their own right hand to use the zipper. Coop's history lesson. I'll get back to the video. <laughs> If you don't want to use the zipper at all, you can use the side straps, which attach with Velcro. So you can plop the vest over front back, sort of like a plate carrier, then connect on the side. If you have certain clothes on, it could be easier that way, so it's nice that you have two different options, the zipper or the side uh, Velcro. And down here, you have this little clip to attach, uh, like, other stuff, anything that'll, you know, attach to a clip. I found it too annoying to strap a Nerf blaster to that because it would flap around on my hip and get kind of annoying. But if you had something lightweight that you wanted to attach, it would work just fine. The shoulders of the vest also attach with Velcro so you can adjust it. It would be kind of impractical to use that as, a, like, a takeoff point to like take off the vest, but to adjust it, it'll work so you can drop the vest up or down depending on your body size. These elastic straps on the side, however, are very short. So if you're um, a bigger person, like overweight, you might not be able to fit into this without some modification. Moving to the back of the vest, we have this big mesh pocket thing. So you can reach in from the top or from the side, which is kind of interesting. So you can actually put a blaster in there and then reach around to your back and grab the pistol out. However, if you put a small object like a jolt in here, it can actually slide out of the side uh, because of this opening. So it'll be fine if you have a large object like a, a Nerf melee toy but uh, small objects like jolts. I don't know why you'd want a jolt on your back anyways, but be warned, it could slide out. That's the product overview of the Battle Vest. Now an overview of the other Tactical Vest,
vest in this video, just to contrast it with the battle vest. This battle vest is more expensive, it's new, it doesn't look like really anything else Nerf has uh, produced, but it's a much higher quality vest, so just to point out the differences. The base platform of this vest is very similar to the old Nerf vests. It doesn't have a zipper, it has these little Velcro straps, it has this giant like mesh backing, and most importantly, in my opinion, these mag pouches are not nearly as good as these battle vest mag pouches. These are genuinely good mag pouches. If you're running heavy mags like from an airsoft or a real firearm, obviously this will not work, but in the past, they've only used these stupid elastic straps, which are just total garbage. Because it takes so long to get a magazine in there, you can't really fit a large mag in, and it, it's difficult to use. If you're large or heavy, like wide, this vest is definitely a no-go. I have like a 33-inch waist, and I had a hard time fitting this vest around my body, and it actually looks like it's squishing me on video. That's because these elastic straps are super short. The old version had these giant straps, so you could wrap it completely around the front and adjust it to pretty much any size, which I find super weird because they left the Velcro on the vest here for an extended strap, but they shortened the strap. I'm not sure why. But going over the features of this vest, it also has a little clip up in the front left. Above that, it has a little mesh pouch with a little Velcro tab. Next to that, another Velcro pouch, and you can fit magazines in here, but there's no elastic tension holding the magazine in the pouch. So if you flip upside down and do hardcore parkour tactics, the magazines will fall out. And next to that mesh, you have two little elastic straps. You can fit a magazine in there, a Nerf Melee. I mean, it's elastic, so it can be pretty diverse. I absolutely hate using little elastic straps like this to hold magazines because it takes so long to shove them in there, and when you pull them out, it, it doesn't slide out like a pouch it's a strap, it's not a pouch. It works differently. Down the center, there are three Velcro attachment straps, and up in the top, there are a few elastic dart or ammo storage places. The side, again, is connected with the Velcro elastic straps, but they're extremely short, so if, if you're wide, it won't stretch out. You can't really fit it around a large person. And getting to the all the way back, there are two sets of, like, elastic straps that are angled. And being elastic, you can fit whatever, uh, like a Nerf sword in there. You can actually fit magazines, but it's difficult to get to them because they're on your back. But they're super low profile and out of the way if you don't want to use them, so if you want to use them, shove whatever you want in there. Product overview of this vest. Holding this vest, it's very similar to the old Nerf vests. This other battle vest doesn't feel the same. It's a thicker, higher quality material. Finishing the overview of the tactical pack, this is the drawstring bag. This is exactly the same as the old one, uh, so I'm not going to waste too much time on it. It works like every other drawstring bag. You know, you open it, you put stuff in there, then you pull on the strings and it closes. A little zipper pouch up here, ammo storage down there, and that's it. It's not that it's a bad product, but it's boring relative to all this other cool stuff, so that's the uh, drawstring bag. Next, a little ammo bag. This is the same design as last time, but with a new uh, camo. Has a little strap with a clip, so you can put it on, um, you know, like a belt loop or the vest or anything. You can put darts in there, then you have a little uh, pull string with one of these little tightening things um, to, you know, keep your darts in there if you want to. The quality of the material feels the same as the last one. It feels like the exact same material, just with a new uh, color. That's that's it. And lastly, the bandana. It is the exact same as the last bandana, just with a new paint color. The differences in this pack were with the vest, uh, the small changes in the pouches and stuff. Now to the battle waist belt. This is a new product, to my knowledge. This Tactical belt works on sort of like a battle belt system, where it's one main belt with modular pouches. So there's one underlying belt with all of these pouches just slid on. So if you, you can take them all off, off, rearrange them, do whatever you want. It comes with four pouches plus a little holster. Um, just as a note, this holster is total garbage. It doesn't fit many blasters and it's so loose that the blaster will be flopping around. Um, I would not recommend it. Not that Nerf has made a holster that's been high quality yet, uh, but you, you mean you're better off putting it in your pocket. There are four pouches, two magazine pouches and two like utility pouches. There are only two types of pouches. So these two are the same and these two are the same. The utility pouch has one large pocket and one little pocket. I'm not sure what you would fit in the little pocket, but you could fit all sorts of stuff up in this top pocket. Ammo, Twinkies, your cell phone, wallet, whatevs. Use your imagination. The other pouches are magazine pouches, and they feature the same cool design as this updated battle vest, like a functional magazine holder, which is cool. So it's like a fabric pouch with a little elastic loop at the top here. So when you slide in your mag, it fits, and then the elastic is uh, binding to the magazine to hold it in place. So it works sort of like the elastic garbage and sort of like the old pouches, and it combines the best of both into a usable pouch, which is cool. But to be clear, the magazine is secured into the pouch fairly well, but there's just a single fairly loose strap on the back, so the whole pouch as a unit will shift a little bit. So your magazines will flop a little. With six round mags, it's hardly noticeable, and as you get to longer magazines, there's more flop, because there's more magazine or mass outside of the, uh, you know, like, secured area. Oh, I was incorrect. There's a little clip on one mag pouch, but not on this one. So they aren't the same. The belt itself is not really like a real battle belt at all. It's way too like uh, flexible and loose. And that means all of your gear is going to move around a little bit. Generally, when you go for a tactical belt like this, you want it to be a very firm, rigid belt to hold, you know, structural integrity around your waist. But I get it. It's a $15 kid's toy. I'm not expecting, you know, the quality out of a $60 like battle belt. For $15, I think this is fairly worth it for people that don't want to use a vest at all. These two mag pouches are fairly usable. I would recommend modifying the back to secure it more to the belt and then securing that belt and just tightening 
it up as tight as you can bear it around your waist. That'll keep your magazines really still up against your body as you're running and doing hardcore parkour tactics. Oh, and the, the front of the belt just attaches with one of these standard little clips and you can adjust it for, uh, you know, your, your size. That's the overview of the waist belt. Last product, we have the H harness or what they call the utility vest. This is pretty similar to the previous design. They had a, a, an H harness or a utility vest very much like this with the old camo. So it features a belt that's similar in concept to the, the belt I just went over, but then it has two uh, shoulder straps to go over to uh, bear the load of your, uh, of your belt. Each shoulder strap has three little elastic dart slots for, you know, cool, tactical cool dart storage. Not really functional, but it looks pretty cool and then two little elastic straps uh, to hold a magazine. I cannot say it enough how much I hate this method of holding magazines. It's not stable, it's difficult to put a mag in, it's difficult to get it out, and it flops around. It's, it's a nuisance. And both straps are the same. So you can put two mags up here and then six darts total. You can adjust the shoulder straps in the back and the front for your height, and that changes where the belt sits if you want it real high or real low, or if you're tall or short. Down to the belt portion of this product, it has a little pouch that you can slide off. It has this single strap in the back, just like the other belt system. So you, if you want to move it to the other side or remove it completely, you totally can. That has just a little Velcro top. I wouldn't recommend this for dart storage. It's a little small, but it's a small utility pouch for a cell phone, wallet, stuff like that. And on the back of the battle belt, you have two more elastic straps, so you can put a long magazine in there. Um, it would be difficult to fit a six round mag because of the distance between the straps, or if you want to put like a melee thing in there to like tactically slide it out, which feels pretty cool as like an assassin. So you're running around and then you just kind of reach around and whip out your, your, your sword. Or may maybe I'm the only one that does that. Whatevs. That is the product overview of the utility vest. Let's get real. If you buy this, it's just for looks. It doesn't really do anything, but it does look pretty cool. I really dig this uh, tiger stripe style camo. <laughs> so that is the product overview. Let's see everything out on the range. Wait, that doesn't make sense. Now to my overall opinion on these products and more or less my closing statements. Like with Nerf Tactical gear of the past and this toy grade stuff that's on Amazon, third party sellers make stuff very similar to this. It's really all about calibrating your expectations. If you've handled paintball gear like the pod holders, airsoft tactical gear, or real steel training gear like a plate carrier, this type of gear will not hold up to any of that. It's toy grade tactical gear designed to look pretty cool, get the job done under light stress, like a nerf battle. I mean, most nerf battles, we're not like doing hardcore parkour tactics all the time and like rubbing up against stuff in the woods and stuff. I mean, the vest I've had for years isn't dirty at all because I don't nerf in the dirt, that's icky. <laughs> So when I whine about certain features and say it's weak or cheap or doesn't work very well, try to keep in mind this stuff is toy grade tactical gear. And for most people that buy it, expecting a toy grade tactical piece of gear, it works just fine. I was really surprised at both of the vests limiting how large of people can fit into them. I know quite a few kids who are way larger than me and they won't be able to fit into this stuff. So if you have a larger torso than me, definitely don't buy this vest because it was tied on even me. And this one, it has, uh, you know, size limits. The side straps are elastic, but it would be uncomfortable if, if you're stretching it too much all the time. They totally had the real estate on the front of the vest to add larger Velcro panels here so you, they could have a large strap so it would fit large people. I'm not sure why they didn't do that. But the battle vest is awesome. If you're an HVZ or if you're a tactical nerfer or practical nerfer and you're like competitive, this is designed well enough that I can recommend it to everyone other than, you know, super skinny or super fat people. So I really appreciate having four magazines right up front, no nonsense. So far and away, the battle vest for about 30 US dollars is my favorite product out of all of these. $30 is a lot for a toy grade vest like that, but if you buy like a plate carrier for 30, then you have to buy the little pouches. And unfortunately, airsoft and firearm pouches don't really fit our magazines that well. There's a lot of compromise. You either fit a lot in there or it's not tight enough because the elastic doesn't fit. These are specifically designed for our Nerf mags, which is super cool. And it holds them in there pretty well. So I dig it. The belt isn't perfect. There is a lot of flex. These pouches do move and wobble a little, but for 15 US dollars, these pouches are pretty good for the price. And with some modification, like if you know how to sew, you can turn these pouches into really stable, high quality tactical pouches. So if you're a competitive nerfer or an HVZ -er and you don't want to wear a vest, this one could be um, solid if you don't mind modifying it. Or of course, if you don't mind everything flopping around a little bit. <laughs> so that's it for this group review of the new tactical gear. Saw this stuff pop up on Amazon and I thought it was the exact same as the old design with this new tiger stripe. Now that's not a bad thing. I think the tiger stripe looks pretty cool, but I was surprised to see they changed the design a little bit and for the most part for the better except if you're fat then then you can't use the vests so that's it for the review of the Nerf Tiger Stripe Tactical Gear. Again, I reviewed four separate purchases and you can buy these items sometimes like alone or in packages or whatever. Check the link in the description if you're interested in buying any of these. That's it for this video. If you have any questions or comments, leave those in the section below. Thanks so much for watching, bros, and as always, stay tactical. Cool.